Ludwig Aberg, he's got one of the best swings in the game of golf at the minute. And I honestly think this guy is going to win multiple majors and be world number one at some point. It's so simple, so effective. He's already won once on the PGA Tour and once on the DP World Tour. And the guys on tour are comparing him to Tiger. So this guy can seriously play golf. His swing's really simple and really effective. So if we look from down the line, it's set up just very neutral angles, nice knee bend, nice bit of flexion there through the spine, just very, very sort of orthodox posture it's set up. And if we look from face on, again, he's got that foot flare that we see in a lot of the best players. That left hand is a little bit strong, and then that right hand's pretty neutral. So it's a very sort of orthodox posture posture set up and grip like i say that that left hand is a little bit strong but nothing out of the ordinary so if we take him back i'm going to show you something that's a little bit unique to ludwig and it's that left foot at takeaway and we'll explain why he does that so if we look at the left toe as he takes it back you see very very subtly how there's a big a gap occurring under his left toe can you see that Really, really subtle, but what he's doing there is it's just allowing him to push his weight into the heels and load specifically around the glute, specifically that trail glute. And you'll see from down the line, as he starts back, he's going to push that glute back. Can you see that? It moves towards that red line. But a lot of that is due to how he sort of raises that left toe and then moves the weight in this diagonal di diagonal direction into his trail heel. So that's something a little bit unique and it's actually a really good drill for anyone who struggles with that weight shift or struggles with early extension. So I love that little trigger move from Ludwig. Now as we take the club back you're going to see a very one piece takeaway. He's going to shift his head and his pelvis a little bit to the right you can see there. So he's loading again into that trail side, that trail glute, nice and wide, little bit of wrist set, that club head is outside his hands, parallel to his back line, a little bit of bend in that right arm, just absolutely textbook position from Ludwig here, love that motion. And then as he moves the club back, he's going to set his wrist a tiny, tiny amount, that right arm's going to start to fold. Now it's a little bit more behind him probably than you'd say most, especially tall guys. So let's bring it back. You'll start to see that right arm move back behind him a little bit here. Like I say, he's got a subtle amount of wrist set. Nothing, nothing major. Not like back in sort of Ledbetter days or the 90s where everybody was trying to get like Faldo right up there. So lots of width there. Love that position you'll see. He's got a nice bit of rotation through his spine. Those hips haven't rotated a lot, his belt buckles. I mean, if it was to draw a belt buckle from the belt buckle, be about pointing there. And you can see here how you can see a lot of his knees there. So he's really not rotating a huge amount through that pelvis. So he's creating a tremendous amount of stretch through the spine here as he's loading up. So we'll take him a few frames up to the top of the swing and you'll see, look at that width there. Huge amounts of width. Like I say, he's not got huge amounts of rotation through the thoracic spine compared to somebody like Rory or Tiger in 2000, but he's also not rotated his hips a huge amount at the top of the swing. And you'll see he's got huge amounts of width, like I've mentioned. That right arm is a little bit flared out, which we'll see how he uses that right arm in transition, which is quite, quite interesting. I like this move, but great sort of textbook position there. Loads of width. And for a tall guy, he's really utilizing that width because he is, he's got long levers and that can create a ton of speed. You'll notice as well that he's not got a ton of right arm bend, which again helps create the width and he's staying well short of parallel. It's interesting if he was to swing his hands around here, he'd probably gain about five mile an hour club head speed, which is ridiculous considering how fast he already swings it. But this is where I think things get a little bit interesting, specifically around the lead wrist and that trail elbow. So what we see with a lot of guys from the top, 
is a lot of guys will move this lead wrist into flexion or more commonly they'll bow that wrist in the downswing that creates some torque around the club it also will shallow the shaft out and it strengthens the club face a little bit it's a really common move you'll see on the tour that that wrist moves into flexion you know that old school sort of saying of revving a motorcycle that's what's happening now ludwig doesn't do that but what he does is he pinches the right arm in so if we look from down the line first watch how this position doesn't really change in his lead wrist as he starts down but can you see that move inwards or internal rotation of that trail forearm so you'll see as you move down that right arm's getting pinched towards his left and he's moving that internally which then is creating a tremendous amount of torque about the shaft you can see how it's bending in transition but you'll also see how he's not moved that lead wrist more into flexion it's staying in that more sort of cupped position in traditional golfing terms or more into extension whereas guys you'd see them move a lot more into flexion in that initial portion of downswing which is very very unique for Ludwig swing but what he does is he pinches that right elbow in and if you see from face on you'll see this sort of move there and you see how that right elbow moves down, down. So all he's doing is he's moving into an internal rotation and you'll see how quickly that right elbow appears below the left arm. It's a tremendous move to allow you to shallow the club. But then again, look how cupped that lead wrist is. Quite unique, not a lot of guys move in that way. Webb Simpson on tour would be one guy. Um, John Ram actually moved, I know he's a very sort of uh, bowed at the top, but he does move a little bit into extension and downswing. But there's very few guys on tour who actually move that way. So something very subtle, but he does have unique aspects to his swing. So if we move from a couple of frames down, you'll see, again, like most great players, they've got that elbow below, the right elbow below the left, and they've maintained that lag in the club head. This position does look again a little bit funky because he's still got that extension in that lead wrist. If we bring him down on face on, you'll see there because he's kept that extension, look how low that right shoulder is. Sorry, the right elbow. It's a very unique motion. And I'll be honest with you, not a lot of guys will have the flexibility in that trail shoulder to do that. You don't look how lo much lower it is than the lead elbow. <laughs> That's not usual. You'll see with am amateurs, that right elbow a lot of the times will be up here. So it's very, very unique action, but it works around his wrist. It wouldn't surprise me if he was a little bit uh, limited in his ability to flex the wrist. Could be potentially why he moves that way, or it just could be a unique aspect of the swing. But you'll see he starts down great body action starts to drive that right knee towards the ball you'll see on here starts to drive that right knee towards the ball move him down a couple more frames look at that he's just maintained i'll clear those lines up for us he's maintained that angle in the wrist maintained that posture and then he can just let it rip. So those angles he's created, what he's going to do now, he's going to push the ground this way with that lead foot, and that's going to help him push that lead hip back. He'll then straighten this right arm, and then this tr creates a tremendous amount of speed down at the ball. So watch this. This right arm is starting to straighten there. Boom, look at that impact position. Nice straight arms, loads of speed and power created there. If we look from down the line, look, boom. And you'll see how he moves into that, tr that lead heel and then pushes off the ground. It's a move that you'll see. With Tiger did it in 2000, a lot of long drive guys do it. It's just because they're pushing so much pressure through that lead foot through the toe and then into the heel that drives the hips back and up and creates this whip effect on the club 
and then he can get a nice look at that look at the extension there with his arms look at that release you'll see here a little bit more release than probably what's being taught at the minute where we're being taught to sort of hold off the club Ludwig because his wrist is in that more extended position in the downswing has to release the club a little bit more so he gets a big whip big release through and then you'll see a very Swedish what I'd call finish position where his thorax his chest is really stacked over that left side and he's very very upright you'll see this a lot Stenson's like this um, Annika Sorenstam's very much like this I think it's probably come from uh, Jimmy Ballard had a very strong influence in the Swedish Golf Association I'm pretty sure um, and he's very much about finishing nice and tall and over that left side so it's very very simple swing from Ludwig a bit unique in terms of the wrist angles but just a powerful motion he's a tall guy and he utilizes those long levers that lead arm being so long to create loads of width and it's just such a simple swing there's not a lot of up and down like you see with a lot of guys so he can maintain that width and that space look how much space he has when he hits the ball just loads of room there a lot of guys will get a little bit cramped up and it causes issues there Ludwig just because he's not creating a ton of sort of movement it's just like down up and around very very simple action not a lot of excessively moving parts just a fantastic swing and I would be very surprised if this guy is not number one and picks up multiple majors in the next few years.